Matchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network invite you to discover your mission. A brand new in-depth monthly video series featuring engaging Catholic speakers who will challenge you to live your life abundantly. For only $25 a month, you will receive a personal monthly mission, including three full-length inspirational talks that build upon a new theme each month. Sign up for the Discover Your Mission tier at patreon.com slash patchworkheartministry today. Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry present Journeys in Faith. Now, here's Andy Santis. Hi, and welcome to Journeys in Faith here on this Friday evening. It's great to be here with you because I have an amazing guest that I'm very excited for all of you to meet. Uh, she is from my area. I'm here in the greater Philadelphia area. So I have with me Nikki Verna. Nikki is a soul core leader. Now you're going to learn all about what that means and what soul core is. So first I want to introduce to you, Nikki Verna. Hi, Anne. It's great to see you. It's great to be with you. Thank you for inviting me today. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a real blessing. I first got to meet you, I will admit, uh, because I'm in the Philadelphia area and you were part of the rosary team for oh, our yeah. own archdiocese. Mm -hmm during yes. the pandemic. That's actually still going on. I just was on last night. So we're close yeah. to doing uh, almost a year of that nightly rosary. Oh, it's amazing. I'm, I'm yeah. so grateful. My husband and I and my daughters have been pretty faithful to it. And um, especially like during those beginning months of the pandemic, it was, was just yes. so beautiful that you gave up your time to pray yeah, with all of us. It's been such a blessing. I know we started out with probably a thousand to 1200 people logging on every night. And even after almost a year, we still have over 600 continue to log on every night, which is so beautiful. Such a blessing. Mary has been so beautiful to us during this time. Absolutely. Sorry, that, sorry, that was my cuckoo clock. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> We're a laid back show here <laughs> yeah. on Journeys in Faith. So, um, but thank you again for joining us. Uh, I'd love it if you could start out by telling us uh, your own faith journey during this first half of the show? Sure, I'd love to. So I grew up in a house with uh, my mom and dad and my sister, and we did not grow up in a house that was filled with any type of organized religion. I do recall as a small child praying with my mom, but nothing, you know, other than that, maybe just pray, praying before we went to bed. Um, so just through the years, I was very close with my grandmother, my dad's mom, and she was a very faith-filled Catholic woman. And as I grew older, I just felt more drawn to her. And I, and I remember a time that she just took her finger and she made a cross on my forehead and she said, God bless you. And that still, it still sticks, it still makes me a little choked up because I just felt like she had such beautiful power and that God was really working through her. And because of that, it just drew me you know, to, do, to look into my faith a little bit more and just to find out what faith was. So uh, at, through college, I, you know, dabbled here and there. I went to mass a few times with some friends, but nothing really that I could remember stuck in my head. But then after college, I, you know, was thinking, what, what am I going to do now? I need to do something. So I checked into the Catholic church. It was, it was Nativity BVM and Media. And I just called there and I said, how do I become a Catholic? And they said, oh, you can come for some RCIA classes. And so I enrolled. I didn't really know what I was enrolling for. I didn't even know what RCIA stood for. But I remember meeting this beautiful little nun named Sister Eleanor Cecilia. And she met with 
um, me and three other people. We met weekly for almost a year and it was a beautiful time of just exploring my faith and just, just seeing who God was and how he was calling me to, you know, come into the fullness of the church. So uh, during that time, I had met a, a young man that I started to date who eventually became my husband. So he was also a Catholic and so we were dating during the time that I was received into the church. And so he was present at my, I had been baptized as a baby. So he was there for my first Holy Communion, my confirmation and my full reception into the church, which was really a beautiful thing. And I didn't even know we would be married. I just thought it was, you know, kind of a cool thing to date and, you know, go to church together. So, um, so fast forward, I just, accepted the Lord at that time and just really didn't know truly what I was doing, but little by little, just growing in my faith and, you know, having children with my husband, we were very open to exploring our faith together as a family. We enrolled our children in Catholic school. And that was when I really started to um, see all the possibilities that I had been missing in my faith. So actually my oldest son is 23 so I remember when he came home from first grade and uh, showed me this saint. His name is Max. So his saint project was on St. Maximilian Kolbe. So that was the first saint that I had ever learned about. And I was just fascinated. So I started to go through his religion books with him and really just became very enthralled. And just through the years, just developed my faith a little bit more, you know, through different things that I've done and different um, prayer apostolates and so now I'm just, I'm all in, I'm a hundred percent in and, you know, now I teach Catholic high school. So mm -hmm. it's been a really amazing journey and just a beautiful ride. Yeah. You were a guest, Nikki, as you know, <laughs> on <laughs> Sewing Hope, which is another podcast that I do with Patchwork Heart Ministry with Bill Snyder. And yes. a Patchwork Heart Ministry is very good friends with the network that we're on right now, Fiat Ministry Network on Facebook and YouTube. And mm -hmm. uh, so I've heard your story before and I love your story. And, uh, <laughs> and especially when you were talking about your grandmother, I, I especially can understand that as I was also very, very close to my mom's mom and, and she had a very great effect on me too. So I can yeah. definitely understand that too. And yeah, and, and something about that. little old ladies, you know, who go to mass <laughs> every day, it's just a beautiful thing. And I think I'm turning into that little old lady who goes to mass every day. So Oh. It's a beautiful thing to blossom into. So, Praise God. Praise God. Now, yes. you said that you're a teacher as well. Tell us about that. Yes. Um, well, throughout the pandemic, I had been substituting for uh, several of the Catholic elementary schools. And so I recently completed my master's in theology at St. Charles. So I had just been on the website at the Archdiocese, and they had put just a little blurb. It seemed like a plea for help and just said they were looking for substitute teachers at the high school level for theology. And I thought, I could do that. Like, I have a degree. I know what I'm talking about. And I had done a lot of adult faith. So I applied. I went and, you know, got all my paperwork. I had to get credentials and transcripts and whatnot. And really, I no sooner hit send that my phone was ringing and um, a school called me. And so I've been there since December 8th as a long-term sub in theology at uh, Bishop Shanahan High School, and it's been beautiful. And I'm having a ball. I'm, I'm actually kind of secretly um, just sad that they pay me for doing something that I love to do so much, but don't <laughs> tell anybody I said that. <laughs> I won't, but there's one person I may. <laughs> because uh, on a side note, I want to say hello to her. My daughter, Elaine, my 24-year-old, yes. a theology teacher at Cardinal O'Hara High School. Oh, in nice. Philadelphia. Yes. She's with Father John. Teacher. Yes. Yes. And she started, she's also a quote, long term sub, hoping to be able to stay in the field. So you and her have something yeah. in common. I have to mention that's that. That's awesome. I didn't know if you knew it's, that. So, yeah. No, I didn't know that. That's great. It's an exhausting job, but it's, it's so beautiful. I just, I love getting up and going to school every day. It's just, it's a great joy for me to be able to share my faith with these young students. So. Yeah, I don't know how they feel about it, but <laughs> no, my daughter happy. loves it. She really does. And even during COVID, you know, she's had some days at home because mm -hmm. of the snowstorms or because of COVID. But uh, she was never a teacher before, too. And she's just 24. But 
Yeah. I can see the joy in her as I see in you. Mm -hmm. So I want to make a shout out to all of our friends here that are watching that may be your students. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And maybe they're watching right now and our friends with the Archdiocese of Philadelphia as well. So uh, amen to that. Amen to that. And again, thank (laughs) you for uh, sharing about that. So is there anything else we'd love to hear more about your faith journey? Because I know it didn't end there. There's a lot more (laughs) that happened uh, between the time of Bishop Shanahan and also what you did uh, after your conversion. Yeah. So after my um, acceptance into the church, I just continued to grow closer to the Lord. And my mom started to see some changes in me and she was very curious as to what was going on with me. So I just subtly invited her, you know, probably every week, but maybe every two weeks to come to mass and she would never come. And and I didn't expect her to come. She had no idea what mass even was. She was never a practicing um, Catholic. So, but my dad was a fallen away Catholic. He had, you know, fallen away from the church at a you know, in his teenage years. Um, And it was his mom who, you know, made the sign of the cross on me. So he had a connection to that. So I just kept inviting them to come. And eventually my mom called me and she said, you know, um, I want to find out what you keep inviting me to. Can I come? And I was like, yes, you can come, just come. So she came to a couple masses and, you know, if you don't know what's going on, it's, it's just a confusing, strange thing to sit through. So, you know, she came once and then I didn't see her again for a little while. And then one night she called me and she said, uh, what is that thing you do when you go and you sit in the church and you just sit there in quiet silence? And I said, uh, you mean adoration? And she said, yeah, yeah. What, what is that? And so I explained that to her and she said, could I come? And I said, yes, you can come. So I happened to be doing adoration once a week and it was like a crazy hour of like four o'clock in the morning. So I said, you can come any, you know, Tuesday at four o'clock, I'll be there in the morning. And she was like, four o'clock in the morning. I can't come four o'clock in the morning. I said, yes, you can. So surprisingly, one morning she showed up and she sat next to me and she kept whispering to me like, what what are you doing? What are we doing? What am I supposed to be doing? And so I tried to, to, you know, explain to her what it was. And I tried, tried to explain to her what the monstrance was and what Jesus was doing on the altar and what this whole adoration thing was. And, and she seemed, you know, interested, but four o'clock in the morning is, is, kind of hard to do. <laughs> so fast forward a little bit, you know, a couple of years probably went by and, you know, I just kept inviting her. And then she finally just called one night and said to me on the phone, I, I think I want to become a Catholic. Would you be my sponsor? And I, I didn't know what to say. And I said, uh, yes, <laughs> of course. So she and I went through the RCIA program at St. Mary Magdalene in media together And so she was received into the church at the Easter vigil that next year. And then beautifully, also, she kind of was drawing my dad back in. So before that Easter vigil, when my mom was received, my dad came and he made a confession, which he hadn't done, he told me, in over 50 years. So he made a a confession. And then my parents were remarried in the church. It was just a simple ceremony with, you know, Monsignor and my husband and I and our four children, and we witnessed them being married in the church, um, probably on like a Wednesday of Holy Week. And then my mother was received into the church on that following Saturday. And then Easter Sunday, we all went to church as a family, my mom and dad and um, myself, my husband and my kids and my sister and her husband. So it was a really beautiful time. And I saw how just the workings of my heart and in my faith journey just kind of, you know, permeated out into, you know, people who I had contact with. And it just, it said, God is just so amazing. I can't explain it. You know, he just does his thing with whoever he wants to do it with. And all we can do is just be open and willing to let him take us for the ride. And it's always beautiful. Oh, I I just love your story. And I can't stop smiling. So often (laughs) in the Catholic church and even in church circles and what I do, because I'm the director for a foundation with uh, the Catholic Church through uh, mm-hmm. the Mercedarian religious order called the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation, which people are going to watch when they see the commercial during the show and learn about the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation. But we hear so often people talking about their kids who are away from the church. And 99% will say, right, or whatever, somewhere around that yeah. number, uh, that's what it is. Very rarely... And I understand, I will say, uh, (laughs) 
very rarely do we hear it the other way around where you know you're praying for your parents and you're praying for your sisters and brothers and your cousins and yeah. your, your extended family right uh, so, that's right but i do understand that and uh, i think that's an amazing thing to hear what joy you had when you could see your own parents really celebrating the faith yeah so i mean I it just, does say yeah scripture says let the children lead them so my son led me so it just seemed right that i would lead my parents so you know it's all good we're yes. all heading to the same destination we're just gonna gather our friends and family along the way so yeah it's so beautiful now you mentioned uh that it was in the church in media Mm -hmm. uh, St. Mary Magdalene, and was it Monsignor yes. Shifo? Yes, it was. Okay, I figured the one it was. and only. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. didn't know what happened, but I'm guess I guess that it was him and yes. his wonderful uh -huh. priest too in our archdiocese. Absolutely, that's right. Yes. So, uh, tell us about your family too, your husband and your kids. Uh, we'd love to yeah. hear more. Yeah, um, I've been married to my husband Tom for next week will be 27 years. Mm -hmm. We have four children. And last year, last uh, June, Tom was ordained as a permanent deacon in the Catholic mm -hmm. Church, which was such a beautiful, amazing journey that we've been on. So the two of us went through the Catholic um, formation at the seminary, St. Charles Seminary, together. And that is why I have a master's in theology from St. Charles, because he and I did that together. That was kind of our Wednesday date night for the past eight years. Um, so at the end of this beautiful, long journey, he was ordained as a permanent deacon. And he is uh, assigned to St. Andrew the Apostle Church in Drexel Hill mm -hmm. with uh, Monsignor Grouse and actually Father John Masson, who's the chaplain that your daughter knows at uh, O'Hara. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, she's mentioned him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's a beautiful priest. And Monsignor Grouse has been just beautiful. And so Tom really wanted to preach. You know, he likes to be with the people. And so he asked to be assigned at a parish that didn't have a deacon. Um, and so St. Andrew the Apostle, they technically have a deacon. His uh, name is uh, Deacon DeLuca. He's well into his 90s, and mm. he still gets up once a month and um, preaches on the altar. But he's very happy that Tom is there to kind of take over for, you know, what he can't do in his, you know, older age. But he's been very generous to Tom. And, he's, and Tom is having a beautiful time there. And the, the Lord has been so amazing. I mean, I listen to him preach on the altar and I think, wow, is that the same guy I married 27 years ago? <laughs> like he's never spoken so eloquently as when he does on the altar. So it's really been just a Holy Spirit all over the place on that. So that's how I actually got involved in substitute teaching because, you know, wherever the deacon goes, his wife follows. So I just put it out to the principal that I had some time on my hands. And so I started substituting there. And actually, I think I was in the car waiting to go in to teach when you and I met last time for the podcast. <laughs> yes, that is exactly right. I yeah. remember that. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. thank you that you actually made time to do it from the car <laughs> <Yeah>. for the <laughs> Sewing Hope podcast. And I want to encourage people that if you want to learn even a little bit more about Nikki Verna, that you could go to Patchwork Heart Ministry on YouTube and look up that podcast on the playlist for Sewing Hope and listen to a wonderful podcast because, you know, when you interview people, there's always something that you miss. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you have a fascinating life and we're just so grateful that you're here with us at Fiat Ministry Network. And our tagline is saying yes to Jesus Christ. And I think that you've done that very well, you and your husband and your family. Yeah. <laughs> and I just uh, really and truly congratulate you for your wonderful work and Oh, you're sweet. Thank you. Yeah. But it takes, really. it takes one to know one. You know, you're thank doing you. your ministry and you're doing a wonderful thing there too. So oh, thank you yeah. so much. It means yes. a lot. Well, we're grateful. We're grateful for you and, and all that you're doing. I mean that. I mean that from also, yeah. even from our archdiocese, you've done a lot for the archdiocese during this pandemic with the rosary. Mm -hmm. And and that was such a blessing to myself and my family. We would listen to it all the time and see you. So when I met yeah. you finally <laughs> online the first time, it was like, oh, I know her. <laughs> Wait, I know her. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's been, a, that's been a wonderful joy. I mean, the people that I've met, the priests who give their time and pray the rosary together, it's just been beautiful. I've met some really beautiful people through that. In fact, last night I was praying and I have a statue. It's a, it's a Timothy Schmaltz statue of the Holy Family. And so I like to just put something, you know, into the screen. So last night I put that statue and 
So lady today, she found her way to the archdiocese. She found a website, she found an email and she emailed somebody there. And the email got back to me that she wanted to know who, who the statue was made by and how can she buy one? Cause she thought it was so beautiful. So I thought that was really <laughs> cute. No, it is. I mean, that's a way that we evangelize, isn't it? The, in the little ways, yeah. just like St. Therese of Lisieux said, it's those little ways. And, and, and that's the way that you did that. So yeah, truly that's incredible. Great. And also, so there's a segue into Soul Corps, that's another way that we can evangelize. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Now, we're going to have to take a break in just a couple minutes here. But I want to also acknowledge a friend of ours, both of ours, who brought us mm -hmm. together. And that is Heather Makowitz yes. from Peak Encounter Ministry. Because yes. uh, Heather was a guest this past Friday on the show. She's also a friend of mine and a friend of yours. So yeah, I just want to say, girl. I love hi, her. Heather. Thank you so yes, much for hi, Heather. together <laughs> <laughs> for this show. So yes. um, Nikki, we're going to take a break for just a few minutes. So we will be back here on the Ad Ministry Network in just a few minutes. Hi, my name is Anne DeSantis, and I'm the director for the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. You can learn about us on our website at nonatus.org. I'm here to tell you today about two great podcasts that I hope that you will tune in. The first Tuesday of every month at 8 o'clock, we have a podcast specifically for Catholics affected by divorce. From 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern, go to Philly Nonatus on YouTube to subscribe. In addition, we also have a podcast the last Thursday of every month. That's also at 8 o'clock Eastern Time for one hour. And that one is for families in crisis. We have some really great guests coming up soon, so hope to see you then. Please also consider the fact that you can make spiritual direction appointments with us, with our spiritual moderator. All you need to do is go to our website on the contact form and just reach out to us. We'd be happy to hear from you and look forward to setting up an appointment. So we'd love to connect with you. Please share this video and let people know that we're there for families affected by divorce and also families in crisis. Thank you. Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network present the Discover Your Mission series. Now I had been brought up without any prayer, without Bible, without church, nothing of that kind. And so when my father died, I became suicidally depressed. I, I had no desire to live. And yet, by the grace of God, uh, whenever I got to the point of actually taking my life, I always had this interior conviction that if I took my life, I would simply find it again on the other side and it would be permanent misery. But it wasn't until I became a wife and a mother and I began to try and pass my faith on to my children that I realized that everything I knew about Jesus was memorized doctrine. I was a good man, I was a good father, I was instilling the sacraments into my family. But, uh, I was definitely not intentional, I was stuck rope in my faith. But what kind of strength did he have? Jackie did not just have a strength of body or baseball skill. He had a strength inside of his spirit, a courageous, meekness that empowered him to play the game. And I tell him what is going on with me and he's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, no, no, no. I think this is like some sort of miracle, dude. And he's like, okay, you know, of course, but I'll believe it when I see it. Honey, you've been trying to quit and you've been saying this and saying that. And I'm, a, you know, he, his big line to me is you shouldn't say things <laughs> because I never followed through on them. And so this was, Week after week, month after month, he is looking at me like, this is a miracle. There is no way that you, on your own, could have done this. So we are called to sing. All of us are called to sing. All of us are called to express ourselves and join our voice into the unity of the church. Uh, 
often with my choirs, I, I ask them to listen to each other, to listen to the, the sound that they make together as one. That's what we're aiming for. Through the harmony or unison, we're aiming for a one sound. You need to decide. What are you going to participate in? Are you going to participate in the historic Christian idea of the altar of sacrifice, which is in the Eucharist, or not? on Fiat Ministry Network. Great to be here. And as I said at the beginning of the show that I have an amazing guest again, uh, Nikki Verna. She is with SoulCore at SoulCore.com. She's in the greater Philadelphia area. So I'm so grateful. Nikki, again, thanks so much for joining us. Yes, it's great to be with you. Yes. Now, during the first half of the show, you talked a lot about your own faith journey. You told us about your family. You told us about how you were uh, really evangelized by your grandmother and how God really had you on a journey uh, to a place where you are with your family right now. And uh, this half of the show, we really want to talk about what you're doing uh, aside from your work, your full-time work, because mm -hmm. you're at Bishop Shanahan High School in the Philadelphia area mm -hmm. as a theology teacher, but you also work for Soul Corps. And uh, I mean, I'm just fascinated by Soul Corps because I think it really brings together the physical and the spiritual. So tell us what yes. exactly is Soul Corps? Uh, so Soul Corps is, uh, it's a movement. It's a marriage between uh, physical movement and prayer. So we know that prayer involves your body, your mind, and your spirit. So it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful ministry which incorporates the prayers of the rosary with simple functional movements, flexibility and stretching. Um, and so in each class you pray an entire rosary and it, fo it focuses mainly on the virtues that are associated with the mysteries of the, vir of the uh, rosary, just to help deepen your prayer life and you know, allow the Holy Spirit to really delve deep into your spirit and help you to focus yourself and grow closer to Christ through Mary. So Mary is always gently leading us to her son, and this is a beautiful way to do that. Yeah, it is. I think it really combines um, the importance of, you know, our bodies are temples, aren't they? I mean, mm -hmm. we're temples of the Holy Spirit. And yes. it's really what God, God wants us to take care of ourselves. He wants us to be healthy. He yes. wants us to live a full life. I mean, unfortunately, disease happens and physical ailments do happen. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just a part of earthly life. But I think what Soul Core is doing is bringing together that natural element of taking good care of yourself through stretching, through exercise, and also through prayer. Like you said, the rosary. Yeah. There's no better prayer as a Catholic. Exactly. Like you're, <laughs> yes. you're praying the gospel is what you're doing. Yes, you're the gospel. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, what is it like for you as you're in the middle of like doing this prayer and you're helping mm -hmm. people to get physically fit too. What is that like for you? Yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful thing for me. I always had a, like a physical background. I danced as a child and then I was, in a, I've been a robot instructor for, you know, 30 plus years. So it seemed like a natural kind of progression for me to just incorporate this newfound faith that I have um, with something that I had been doing for so long. So it just kind of came across my spirit a few times and I just really had no time to to add anything else into my you know life the kids were small but I had joined a, a mom's prayer group at St. Mary Magdalene when my kids were in school there and that's where I really learned to pray the rosary with a group of women who were all moms we all had kids in similar uh, situations and we would meet every Tuesday and we would go through this series of prayer and we would always pray the rosary together and I remember I didn't know what the rosary was. And so the leader gave me a pamphlet. And so I would literally just read from the pamphlet. And I just felt really connected to that prayer. So through the years, the rosary has just become a lifeline to me. And I, I do pray it every day. Um, and so for this ministry to come into my, 
you know, spirit into my realm just seems so natural for me to just incorporate the rosary and to help people grow in not only their prayer life, but also in their physical fitness. So it really was such, such a blessing. And I really just took to it immediately. So it's a, it was formed by two women who are from Indiana and they got together. One woman was a physical fitness professional and the other woman was a runner by just, you know, something she would do on the weekends. And while she would run, she would always pray the rosary. And she just thought, you know, that's a really good way to incorporate prayer and physical activity. So she went online and she couldn't find anything that did that. Like there was no formal group that did anything, like no formal program. So she approached her friend who had a, a physical fitness background and she said, what do you think about this? And the friend said, I think it's beautiful. Let's do it. So they really just jumped in and they, you know, tweaked it and worked with it and, you know, came, came to this beautiful ministry called Soul Core. And so it's been around for a few years. It's gently making its way throughout the United States. I think we have about 150 leaders across the United States and people come just really from word of mouth. Uh, I found it through word of mouth. It was just a little article that the archdiocese had run maybe seven or eight years ago that someone forwarded to me and said, this looks like something that you might like. And so I just put it in my back pocket and, you know, sure enough down the road, here I am the soul core leader and uh, you know, a trainer for their, for their ministry. So it's been Is nothing but beautiful. It's so interesting how God works that you said, so isn't it? <laughs> like casually said, Hey, I think you'd be interested in this and look what happened. Next, exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. And that really is how God works in, in really and truly mysterious ways. I mean, uh, and I think, uh, for people who are watching, they might be thinking, wow, I really like yeah. that because it combines my spiritual life with my physical life yes. and helping me to get active. You know, there's a lot of exactly. people that during like this pandemic, they weren't mm -hmm. able to stay physically active for whatever reason, whether it be just a yeah. kind of like depression or mm -hmm. not being able to go out as much that they stopped doing stuff. So yeah. I wondered if you could tell them, the people that are watching, like what would mm -hmm. be those initial steps? Like they're watching and thinking, you know what? I want to do this. So right. What they do to get involved. So when we, when I first started doing uh, soul core, of course, before the whole pandemic, we would meet, we would normally meet at St. Mary Magdalene in the big conference room and we would bring our exercise mats and I would bring music and we had uh, candles. And so we would pray in a circle. We would pray the rosary. We would go around. Everyone would offer their special intentions and we would pray for one another that way. And so we were doing that probably once or twice a week. And then, you know, the COVID came along and we, we couldn't get together. So I just prayed one night and I said, you know, if this is something that I'm meant to continue, I need to find a way to do that. So, you know, along came Zoom. <laughs> and so we started Zooming. So I just, I called a lot of the girls who I knew would come on the Zoom and we just started doing it on Zoom. And so I would be in my house, everyone else would be in their house and I would just Zoom it. And so in the beginning, we had probably close to 40 women who were meeting uh, we started out doing it once or twice a week and I would just zoom the soul core class and we would pray. And so it would be silent. Most of the time they would just hear me speak, but in the beginning we would go around and offer special intentions for everyone. And then, you know, you were able to do it in the privacy of your own home and, you know, in complete safety and everyone felt, you know, unintimidated about what was going on. No one was looking at them. So I thought it was a really beautiful opportunity for them to kind of, perfect what they thought uh, they wanted to do with soul core. So, you know, as we continue to be quarantined and whatnot, there was a point where we were meeting every day at 11 o'clock and we did that for three months. So we probably over the course of this year have prayed, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of Hail Marys, hundreds of our fathers and glory bees. And we have interceded for, you know, thousands of people in our prayers. So, you know, I've heard back from a lot of the women that this was really their only comfort during that time. A lot of them were home alone. They were isolated from their families. And so this was a time to, to be together as a community and especially as a community of like-minded women who were praying and praying for one another and praying the rosary especially. So 
I mean, Mary showed up big time. I mean, I don't know where that inspiration came other than it came from Mary through the Holy Spirit because I didn't know anything about Zoom. I had no idea even what Zoom was. <laughs> I heard there was like this thing that you could use. And so I checked with my kids and they were using it at school. And so I, you know, figured out how to use it and I invited everybody. And it just, it was just a beautiful way to be together and continue what we were doing and, you know, build the ministry, you know, for the glory of God. And that's exactly what happened. Well, you're doing phenomenal work, really, because I, I just love this whole concept of not only the spiritual, but the physical. And, mm -hmm. and I think it really brings people's spirits up, really. I mean, because of everything yeah. that we've been through with this pandemic. Absolutely. Just to move your body and to be able to, you know, feel an ache and pain was something that a lot of the women you know, had, hadn't done. In fact, a couple times they, you know, I'd hear the moaning and groaning and I'd be like, all right, let's go call up the prayer for warriors. Let's get that, let's get that leg up. So <laughs> in, a, in, in all reality, it really wasn't about the movement. It was more about the movement of the heart. And that's really where soul core comes from is just that gentle invitation from Mary to, you know, develop your relationship with her son. And that's just, you can't beat that. I mean, quarantine or no quarantine we build up our spirits tremendously during that time and we continue to do that now so amen now i know you mentioned your facebook page and i looked it up mm -hmm. Her name again is nikki verna it's n-i-c-k-y v-e-r-n-a it's up on the screen there um and mm -hmm. if you go to her facebook page she actually has you know videos there of herself doing uh the the prayer for soul core so yeah Nikki, so i started I recording i started recording those zoom sessions for you know people who couldn't make it at that specific time um and so i've just posted there's probably 100 or so videos on there from the time that we've been doing it on zoom so and i just leave them up there you anyone is welcome to go on and and you know pray with those it's a perfect way to do it really i mean because if they can't do it like at the exact time that the zoom call is going on, they mm -hmm. can go to your Facebook page. And I know you said that's the best way to connect with you would be yes. to connect yeah. through. So just go to Facebook and look up Nikki Verna and you can connect mm -hmm. with her there and you can watch some of those soul core videos. And if they're from outside of the greater Philadelphia air, which a lot of our viewers are, uh, yeah. then they can go to uh, perhaps soulcore.com if they want to do mm -hmm. it in their area or, you know, Facebook is for, you know, it's, it's all over the place. So yeah, uh, national, exactly. international, I mean, you can watch Nikki's videos there, no matter where you're from. Yeah. There's actually one of our leaders who's, who lives in Italy. And so she, uh, excuse me, my clock is going again. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's eight o'clock. <laughs> Indicating that it's eight o'clock yeah, Eastern that's right. time. That's right. That's um, right. So one of the leaders is from Italy. She's stationed over there, you know, doing some schoolwork and whatnot. So she actually live streams some, um, from some beautiful places in Italy. So, and there's other leaders throughout the United States that, you know, Zoom and whatnot. So, you know, I'm not doing that out there all by myself, but everybody's just doing their little piece. But it's just been a beautiful way to keep connected, to keep prayer and, you know, to continue to thrive in the ministry and bring other people closer to Christ. So. It sure is. Uh, now, was there a time that Soul Corps before like the pandemic, did they do it in person? Was it an mm -hmm. in-person ministry? Yes, it's always been an in-person ministry. It's never really been something that you do virtually. Um, but if you go to soulcore.com, you can see uh, there's a, a section where you can search for classes. I mean, they're all over the United States. And there's also, uh, I know when you log on to the website, they also offer a free trial. If you uh, put in your website or put in your uh, email address, I think you can get a two week trial they have all kinds of uh, live streaming options on, from the website. And I think normally it's, it's maybe a monthly fee for that. I'm not sure what it is, but you can try that out for two weeks and, you know, see different leaders, how they do their classes differently. I mean, everybody uses different prayers and, um, but the, the format is always the same. There's always uh, some prayer in the beginning and we start with the Apostles' Creed, the Our Father and the Three Hail Marys. And then we focus mainly on the virtues associated with each of those mysteries. So if today we were praying the joyful mysteries, you would um, offer a, a piece of scripture that focuses on the mystery or on the virtue for that particular uh, mystery. So if we go through the joyful mysteries, we talk about humility 
you know, the humility of Mary when the angel Gabriel came and spoke to her at the Annunciation. Um, and that's a really beautiful way to kind of not focus on what you're doing with your body so much as what's going on with your heart. So even though you're doing, you know, 800 lunges, it doesn't feel that bad because you're really focusing on Mary and her humility and how can you incorporate that beautiful virtue into your own life. Um, so that's been, that's been really beautiful. And I, you know, I've tried to do different things throughout this whole pandemic, not only praying the rosary, but involving also the chaplet of divine mercy. We've prayed the chaplet of uh, St. Michael, the archangel. We've prayed, I mean, I've looked up every chaplet known to man on the internet <laughs> and made it into a soul core class. So it's been really beautiful for me. I've learned so many new prayers and, um, you know, all these beautiful saints. We did a special one for the divine mercy on the feast of St. Faustina, which was beautiful. Um, Mary undoer of knots. There's some beautiful prayers that I incorporated into uh, a, a exercise format through soul core. So it's been a great way just to open people to new and different ways to pray. Um, and, you know, people can pray however they want to pray. And it's just, you know, having an open spirit and an open heart to just receive what the Lord wants you to receive at that time. So that's a beautiful way to, to think about soul core. It is. I, I agree with you completely. And um, so people are watching. I know that there's some people who are interested and really want to do this. Yeah. And Nikki has offered you a perfect way to connect with her. And, mm -hmm. and there's no cost involved there. It's just to go to her Facebook page at Nikki Verna. Now, I know that it's a women's ministry, correct? Mm -hmm. So if there's a male, a, a, per, a guy watching this and thinking, I wouldn't mind getting involved yeah. in this because I like that. Have you ever had any males that have joined on some of the classes as well? Yeah, actually, one of the women who comes a lot, well, a couple of times her husband popped in and he took the class as well, you know, virtually. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually have one leader who's, who's a male. He uh, signed up with his wife. So they do a team together. They're both leaders for Soul Core. So. And it, you know, typically it's a, it's a women's, but it's not particular to women. It just seems like women are more interested in, you know, praying the rosary and moving of the body. And really we were all home, you know, during the time and a lot of men work during the day. So, you know, a lot of different reasons, but men are not excluded by, by no means. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. So, and I just want to invite people to, uh, to please do check it out. I mean, it's, it's really yes, please do. wonderful. Um, I thought we could back up again and talk about your work as a teacher mm -hmm. at Bishop Shanahan. I'm sure yeah. that you've learned so much about uh, that age group, you know, young people, yeah. people in high school. Um, yeah. What is that like for you? Because I know that during this pandemic for students, it's been kind of tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's been the beautiful thing about Catholic school that um, they were able to go back to, it's called a hybrid model where half the class comes in one day and then the second a day the other half of the class comes in so we're still very much safe we're we're wearing masks and practicing social distancing but we're able to be physically in the school which is so great for the kids i mean we we spent a couple days this week totally virtual because of the snow and they were very anxious to get back into the classroom believe it or not so it's been good i mean i i didn't think i would ever hear a high school student say i really miss being in school but i've heard that a lot it's been a, it's been a joy to see them. And, you know, it's amazing what you think, you know, until they start asking you these questions and you're like, well, oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> so some things, and I did not grow up as a Catholic and of course didn't go to Catholic school. So it's really beautiful to see the way their mind is working and the, the types of things that they're thinking about and asking about and curious about. And, you know, it's tough being a teenager these days. I mean, some of these things that I'm, you know, teaching and explaining and leading them to follow in the faith are tough. They're tough teachings. You know, it's chastity and it's, you know, saving yourself for marriage. And these are tough things that our culture and our society is not supporting. So, you know, I see the struggles within the kids and some of the questions they ask. Um, you know, you can just see them struggling with, you know, that's what I'm going to have to be thinking about when I'm out into the real world. So... Yeah, very, very good points. And I know that my daughter, Elaine, as I said at the beginning of the show, mm -hmm. that she works at a Catholic high school in the Philadelphia area, Cardinal O'Hara, as the same thing that you're doing. She's a long-term theology teacher there. And so mm -hmm. I get to actually sometimes overhear, right, when she's home, 
uh, yeah. kind of like some of the classes and things like that. And she really loves it a lot. But what you said is just perfectly stated. Mm -hmm. um, I think of something like uh, Christopher West's Theology of the Body from John Paul II. Yeah. And how important that is. Uh, to I wish I had heard that when I was in high school, really. That's I right. Mean, that, that may have changed the whole trajectory of my, you know, upbringing. But, you know, I just, I just hope that the students hear what you teach and what you proclaim and what I live as a person and just see that, you know, you can, you can live these things that Jesus is calling us to do and you can still be joyous and you can still have a full life and you're not missing out on anything. In fact, you are meant to be more happy, you know, being in line with what the Lord is calling you to do and how he's telling or how he's calling you to live your life in conformity with him and in his church. So, and that's kind of what I try to get into their hearts, you know, every day that the church is not a bunch of rules and regulations, you know, just trying to kill your buzz. They want you, you know, the church is meant to help you to explore your true self and to be a follower of Christ and to live in the fullness of what he's calling us to do and to be joyous because we don't have no joy without Jesus, really. So that's right. I mean, the, the rules of the church are there to keep us within a happy guideline, right? So that we can yeah. have fulfilled lives and, you know, sin is just no good. I mean, and, yeah. and <laughs> when you're younger, right, when you're younger, and like you said, they have a lot of those choices to make. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a time to really reflect on what is important and the direction that you want to go in, because life is about vocation. And by that, I mean that you all have a calling when you're a younger person, you have a decision to make in some ways, right? right? I right. mean, whether mm -hmm. do you want to be single, will you be single? Will you be married? Will you... Uh, have a vocation to the priesthood or the religious life in some way. Uh, right, so yeah. there's so much to really consider. Uh, so I just thank you so much. I think that the students that you're teaching are really blessed to have you particularly. Ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I feel blessed. I feel blessed to be able to share my faith with them. And in actuality, some days, I mean, I don't even know what I'm going to be doing. And the Holy Spirit just fills my mouth with things that I think, wow, I, I didn't even know I knew that, you know, that kind of thing. Like things come out of my mouth in explanation. I'm like, wow, that sounded really good. Thank you, Jesus. Because, you know, some of those things are really hard to explain to kids who are, you know, 17, 18 years old. You know, you're just some old lady standing up in front of them trying to teach them how to, you know, live a life according to the church from, like, yeah. from their perspective. But, you know, I'm, I try to tell them, you know, I was 18 once. I know, I know exactly what you're going through. You know, it may have been centuries ago, but, you know, it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. But I just hope that they can see that, you know, I'm a person of conviction and I live what I teach and I love living what I teach. And I just want to share that joy with them in hopes that, you know, even if they pick up one little thing along the way, you know, that's a blessing. Yes, absolutely. And I do hope, um, I don't know if you've ever had a chance to tell them your story, because you do have a mm -hmm. great story, Nikki. I mean, I love that, how your grandmother evangelized you and how you prayed enough that your own parents really came, yeah. into, your mother came into the church mm -hmm. You really had no faith before that. And, and your dad who came back to the church. So uh, I don't know if you've had that opportunity, but that's a really good story. Yeah, I'll yeah. think about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll try to we I'll weave it in there sometime. Yeah. Thank you. I understand. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But um, yeah. So um you're doing great things. And um, I wondered if there's anything else that's coming up for you with Soul Core or with your work that you wanted to tell us about or with the archdiocese, the work that you do mm -hmm. there. Um I know that eventually, right, we're gonna come out of COVID and that's gonna be a great yeah. thing for all of us. Yes. I hope, right? <laughs> Praise you God. Hope that it'll be in 2021. Mm -hmm. I do. I'm sure. Yeah. Do. Yeah, I do too. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. We're praying for that, right? That's right. We are praying yeah. for that, but we'll have to keep an eye on, on what you're doing and, uh, and just inviting people to go to your uh, Facebook page. Um, yeah, that would be great. That's right. And if you don't mind, I just want to make a shout out to Nikki, if you don't mind make, to take the time to tell young adults about a conference that's starting the day after this program is being aired on the weekend of February 13th and 14th for young adults called Catholic Dating. And it's oh. 
Very nice. Catholics.com. And the, the foundation that I work for is actually sponsoring this event. So if you, oh, get nice. a chance, yeah, if you get a chance, do go to, for people who are watching, smartcatholics.com mm-hmm. and then go to the events and you'll see that Catholic dating conference where not only myself, but a lot of other uh, Catholic speakers are coming together to talk about this whole idea, not only of Catholic dating, but holy matrimony and what it means. Nice. Yeah. And it is a sacrament, right? It is mm-hmm. a sacrament. Yes. So um, it's so important to know. Hey, Nikki, if you could tell us a little bit more, I know that part of what you teach your students is about the sacraments. What has that been like for you? Mm-hmm. That's been um, very beautiful. In fact, the curriculum that um, I have seniors this year, so the curriculum is, is all about marriage. It's all about chastity. It's all about living a life um, as a disciple of Jesus. Uh, and it's about social justice. So we talk about abortion and we talk about euthanasia and we talk about some of those hot topics that are prevalent in society today. And we look at it through the lens of Christ. And so I think that's important for them to see that, you know, the Bible doesn't really say the word abortion, but it was, it was going on back then. So, you know, some of these things that they think are antiquated, you know, why can't the church just catch up with the times kind of thing? And I, I say to them, you know, why can't we as children of God become more Christified and become more like Christ? We, we can't expect the world to catch up to us, but we can catch up to Christ. So, you know, it's, it's been tough to explain that to them because, you know, they're 17. You know, you remember when you were 17, it was all about me. What's in it for me? What's the best thing for me? So I think that's been the hardest challenge for me is just trying to explain to them that it's, you know, it's time to step out of who you are, put Jesus at the center of your life, and then everything else will kind of fall into place. Yeah, it really makes a lot of sense. And it might be hard to hear uh, for people who are kind of going through those rough times and, and confusion. But yeah. at the end of the day, really, it, it is what's most important. And you discovered that. And I think that's yeah. just uh, <laughs> an incredible thing how you discover that. And I just want to say to you, uh, please do keep up the great work that you're doing. Yeah, and, thank you, Anne. And you yeah, as well. Absolutely. Thank you yeah, for thanks. inviting me again to be with you. It's a joy. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it means a lot. So again, I just want to ask people to make sure that you connect with Nikki Verna. Uh, and also go to soulcore.com if you want to learn more about the organization itself. Um, and to go to her Facebook page at, at Nikki Verna. So mm-hmm. um, before we end, I wondered if you had any final thoughts that you wanted to say to our audience. Oh, I don't know. I think I've, I've spoken a lot. <laughs> 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 just that I, I hope that just, you know, if people see who, who I am and I just radiate joy and Jesus. I mean, I always want to come across as you know, just being a person who is faith-filled and, you know, just radiates joy because it comes from Christ. It doesn't come from me. And this beautiful blessing that I have to be able to pass on my faith to, you know, not only my own children, but these children at high, in high school, that that is definitely a blessing to me as much as it may be to them. So I'm just grateful. And I, I praise God every day that he has me where I am right now, because I feel like I'm, you know, where I'm meant to be. Yeah, you really are. And and we're blessed here at Fiat Ministry Network. And we do invite you to come back here again uh, and do a check-in, right? Because there's Thank you. Yeah, I love there's that. new things going it. on. So we'll have to stay in touch. And uh, so please do come back. And we thank you, Nikki. Thank you for being yes. guest here. Thank on you, Journeys Ann. Faith. Thank you. Yes, and everyone, God bless you. And one more thing I want to mention before we end the show is that um, I'm inviting all of you who are watching after the show is over to go to patreon.com slash patchwork heart ministry for a five minute program called five minutes of faith, where Nikki Verna will be joining me to talk about three ways to grow in your prayer life. So all you need to do again, is just go to patreon.com to that site that I just mentioned. Uh, It's probably has been up on the screen uh, and it's called the discover your mission program and through patchwork heart ministry and Fiat ministry network. They have a beautiful mission series there. Uh, You can be a subscriber. There's different levels there too. So check it out and you'll see another show with Nikki Verna. So again, Nikki, thanks for joining us. Yes. Thank you, Anne. God bless you and God bless your ministry and all your listeners.
Thank you. And we'll see you all here next week on Journeys in Faith. Journeys of Faith is a production of Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry. For more information about Journeys of Faith, email info at fiatministrynetwork.tv. And be sure to friend, follow, and like us on social media. Just search Journeys in Faith with Ann DeSantis.